Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marta. Now, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is flying me to Casablanca. Yeah, that's the place in North Africa they made that movie about. No, they don't plan to star me in a picture, but uh, if I behave myself, they may use me in a frame. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the broken key. According to the encyclopedia, Casablanca is a seaport on the Atlantic coast of Morocco. Situated 33 degrees, 27 minutes north, 7 degrees, 46 minutes west. Which shows you how little the encyclopedia knows. What does that tell you about Casablanca? Does it conjure up the romance and intrigue? Does it say if you peek behind the beaded curtain in the cafe Tangier, you'd find both there personified by Helene Grant? And though Helene may not be Ingrid Bergman, it works out even, because the boy who just parted those curtains isn't Humphrey Bogart either. Mademoiselle Grant? Yes? I am Moulay Hafid. I was told to meet you here. Of course, you can identify yourself. My credentials, comrade. Mm -hmm. Well, they seem to be in order. You are disappointed? Very. These papers show you're Moulay Hafid, but how do you know I'm Helene Grant? I naturally assume... You had no right to. A common turn agent takes nothing for granted. Forgive me. Sit down. Would you care for a drink? I am a Muslim, comrade. Oh, yes. I forgot. You find it strange a follower of Mohammed can be a member of the Communist Party? I don't care who you follow as long as it doesn't interfere with your work. You cabled Paris that Robert Foch is in Casablanca. He is. You're sure you've got the right man? Yes, I... I took this photograph of him last week. Mm-hmm. It's Robert, all right. Who's the girl? She arrived with him from Marrakesh. Her name is Yasmin Marin. So, Robert has gone native. Pardon? I meant no offense, Moulin. It was a natural reaction. You're annoyed. Disturbed is perhaps a better word. I have a problem, comrade. I would like to disaffiliate myself from the party. Oh, ridiculous. Just because I hurt your feelings. My feelings count for nothing. I made this decision many months ago. I joined the party hoping it would improve the lot of my countrymen. You're an idealist, Moulin. You are amused. Oh, I realize such people exist. Even among ignorant natives. I apologize for my remark. Now, about Robert Foch and this woman. Mademoiselle has not answered my question. Mademoiselle has the same answer for you she has for Robert Foch. Why do you think we're looking for him? I have no idea. Comrade Foch was a member of the party in France, a valued member. Ten months ago, he asked to resign. Naturally, the party couldn't release him, so he disappeared. 
Now he turns up in Casablanca with a... Native girl. Yes. And I've been sent here to reason with him. Mamsel had better work quickly. He leaves tonight from Kazes Airport. What? He purchased a ticket this afternoon for Cairo. Oh. Well, maybe I can talk him into canceling out. Get a car, comrade. We'll try. Why, Robert Bush. He learned. Now imagine finding you here. Well, it certainly is a small world. Much too small. Mm. You going somewhere? Why? Well, if you are, I'd avoid Cairo. I don't think you'd like it this time of year. Well, if I knew you were in Casablanca, Elaine, I... You'd have arranged to stay. Naturally. Oh, that would have been lovely. Still, it might have posed a problem. What about Yasmin? Yasmin? Mm. Isn't that her name? She's beautiful, Robert. Moulin showed me her picture. Suppose we leave her out of this discussion, eh? She knows nothing of my activities. Why, comrade, you haven't gone middle class and fallen in love. I said we will leave her out of this. Yes, you will. Now, here are your orders. I refuse to accept them. I wouldn't get on that plane, Robert. I don't think you'd like the welcoming committee in Cairo. Do you remember Emile Rousseau? Emile? Mm-hmm. He's waiting for you at the airport there. Now, personally, I never believed those stories that he learned his trade working for the Nazis at Dachau. Still, one never knows, does one? You win. Oh, I'm so glad you decided to stay. And won't Yasmin be pleased? Suppose I drop you at the hotel and you can break the news. <laughs> Yes? Have I the privilege of speaking with Yasmin Marin? Who is this? I am called Mulai Hafi. What is it you wish? For myself, nothing. I merely desire to be of service to Mademoiselle. You are acquainted with Robert Foch? Are you a friend of Robert? I am a better friend of yours. Did you know Monsieur Foch plans to desert you? You lie. Robert would never leave me. Did he ever mention a European lady named Helene Grant? Why are you torturing me? Why are you telling me all this? Because we have a great deal in common, Yasmin. We both have been betrayed by foreigners. I do not believe you. But you are not as certain as you were before. No, you are lying. If it pleases you to believe that, so be it. But I suggest at least an investigation might be in order. May Allah be good to you. Robert. Robert, open up, Robert. I told you a thousand times, oh, Yasmin. Oh, I should have known he was lying. What? Imagine I almost believe him. What are you talking about? That man who called the one who gave his name is Mulai Hafid. Mulai Hafid? He said the most awful things, Robert. That you were running away with some woman and I was jealous enough to... What are you staring at? Those suitcases. <laughs> well? He was telling the truth. You are planning to leave me? Don't be a fool, Yasmin. Then why are the bags packed? Oh, this is none of your concern. I suppose Ellen Grant is none of my concern either. What is she to you? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Yet you were going away with her. Look, Yasmin, there are certain things you will never understand. Because I am an ignorant native. That has nothing to do with it. It's true I was running away. So you admit it. I'll kill you. I'll kill you both. Oh, you little fool. Put that knife. I'll show you. You are insane. Put you it down. Stop it. Put it down. You idiot. Now get out. 
Oh, no, Robert, please. I never want to see you again. I did not mean it, Cherie. I would never do anything to hurt you. Will you get out or must I make you? Put me down. Put me down. Not till you are outside. I'll kill you. You will never have another opportunity. Robert, please, let me in. I did not mean it, Cherie. Go away. Not unless you say you forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. Promise you will call me. Otherwise, I will not go. All right. You promise? I promise. You won't be sorry, darling. Women can be difficult, can't they? What? Where did you come from? Your bedroom. I suppose I should apologize, but I didn't want to be spotted coming up here. Who are you? Uh, take a card. Michael Waring, Private Investigations, New York. Oh, uh, it's the wrong one. Here, try another. You are with American intelligence? Uh-huh. Now you can understand the reason for my dramatic entrance. So what do you want? Well, I thought you might be interested to know there are several Comintern agents looking for you. Oh, that's absurd. Oh, I suppose Helene Grant is in Casablanca for her health. What, ha what has this to do with you? We uh, want you to come over to our side. Well, you think I would betray my friends? <laughs> I think the shoes on the other foot, they betrayed you. What? Huh? Well, they sold you a bill of goods about what the party stood for, and you discovered they were all lies. Isn't that why you left? Well, isn't it? Yes. All right. We'd like you on our team. You're in a position to tell the free world what communism really means. You do not realize what you are asking. They would kill me. No, they won't. We'll get you out of Casablanca. And... How? They're watching my every move. Oh, we'll manage somehow. I don't suppose Trailways runs out this far. Huh? Wait a minute, I got it. Isn't there a railroad that runs between Fez and Tangier? Yes. All right, I'll rent a car and drive you to Fez. You'll use my name. When you get there, look up a man named Ab Ilkrim. He'll know what to do. And what about Yasmin? A little bundle of trouble was just in here? Yes. Can she go with me? No, she'll have to wait. You can uh, meet her later in Algiers. Well, she would never understand. You saw... Now, let me take care of her. And uh, Hélène Grant? <laughs> well, this seems to be my day for girls. I'll take care of her, too. Now, you hurry up and pack. We leave first thing in the morning. <laughs> Service. This is Helene Grant in 412. Oui, mademoiselle. I don't want to make a noise like a tourist, but one hour ago I called room service. I haven't heard from them yet. A thousand apologies, mademoiselle. Well, what do I have to do to get... Oh, well, never mind. They finally made it. Just a second. I said just a second. Well, what do you... Oh, no. No, you mustn't. You can't. You don't know... <laughs> Summer is just about hitting its peak, and we still have the Labor Day weekend to look forward to and plan for. That's fine for most of us, but we should always keep in mind that these long weekend holidays are often tragic times for some of us who start out gaily to enjoy them. More than 1,300 American families will lose one or more of their loved ones in accidents on the highways. At all times, and particularly on long holiday weekends, Drive as though your life depends on it. It does. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, that's Casablanca for you. Not a bad place if you want to live it up, but a horrible spot if you've got to die. But then what place isn't? Well, I don't imagine it made much difference to Helene Grant and her condition. The first I knew of it was some four hours later when I remembered my promise to Robert Forsh and hustled over to Comrade Grant's hotel room to meet her. Well, when nobody answered, I walked in. And that was my first mistake. She was lying on the floor under the big ceiling fan. And in the dim light, the blades made like a windmill above her head. The effect was almost hypnotic. And then the spell was broken. Pardonnez-moi. Uh, what? Forgive me, monsieur. I am afraid I startled you. Yeah, I guess you did. Permit me to introduce myself. I'm Henri Boulanger at the Prefecture. Oh, well, I can't say this is exactly a pleasure, Inspector. I can understand that, Monsieur. Uh, Monsieur... Uh, Waring, Mike Waring. Mike Waring? 
I don't think the name would mean anything to you. You are too modest. Correct me if I am in error, but you are with American intelligence. How did you know that? We, too, have our intelligence. Cigarette? Oh, thanks. You uh, know who she was? Mademoiselle Grant? But of course. She was a commentary agent. You were, as they say, on opposite sides of the fence. No, now, wait a minute, Inspector. If you think I had anything to do with her murder... Why, monsieur, it would never occur to me. I'm a most unsuspicious type. Still, as long as you mentioned it, what are you doing here? I wanted to talk to her. I should have guessed that for myself. And at the time of her death... I was in my hotel room reading. It's very strange. You are ready with an alibi when you have no idea when she was murdered. Well, it's pretty obvious. She's been dead about uh, three hours, which would put it around nine o'clock. How do you arrive at that conclusion? A state of rigor mortis. Oblige me, monsieur. In addition to your other talents, you are also a doctor? I don't have to be, Inspector. Look at her arms. Most interesting. I wonder if you would be kind enough to accompany me to the Place de France. And in the meantime, the killer gets away. I don't think there is much danger of that. Look, I tell you, you're making a mistake. Then I shall have to pay for it. Uh, no, thanks. Stay where you are, monsieur. Another step and I shall be compelled to shoot. Well, I think you mean that. I most assuredly do. Well, in that case... Oh. Sorry, fella, but you left me no choice. You mind if I borrow your gun? You will regret this, monsieur. Au revoir, mon ami. I am sure we will meet again. Robert, open up. Just a moment. Come in. I'll try and keep me out. I'll lock it. But why? Just humor me. You secured the car? Huh? You were to drive me to Fez. Oh, yeah. Well, the situation's changed somewhat. Elaine Grant has been murdered. No. Yes. Uh, do you mind if I borrow that drink? You don't seem to be using it. Well, how, how did it happen? Around 9 o'clock tonight, someone walked into a room at the Bonaparte and shot her three times. Oh, how awful. Have they any idea who was responsible? Well, if you ask Boulanger... And... Boulanger? He's head of the local prefecture. He suspects me. But why? Well, for one thing, he found me standing over a body. And for another, he knows we work different sides of the street. Well, I see. Well, good for you, then maybe you can explain it to me. Where were you at nine tonight? Oh, surely you don't think that... Why not? Your motive is every bit as good as mine. Elaine Grant was a threat to you. But you promised to end that. Well, you might not have had much confidence in me. Now, where were you? At the Rouge et Noir. Rouge et Noir? It is a cafe near the Place de France. I thought I told you not to go out. Then it is most fortunate I ignored your instructions. Otherwise, I would not have an alibi. I went there to say goodbye to Yasmin. You agreed to let me handle her. The situation was much too delicate. Oh, but you felt sure I could handle Helene. Apparently, I was right. Thanks. So, you were with Yasmin? From 8 till 10. All right. Nice long goodbye. You mind if I check that? Yes, I do. You are not to disturb her. Oh, well, I wouldn't advise you to try to stop me, Robert. If I dumped a police inspector who tried it, it figures a mere civilian wouldn't stand a chance. I'll be seeing you, fella. Entrez. Hello, Yasmin. Yes? Ah, well, nice dressing room you've got here. You must sing well to rate it. What is the meaning of this? I, uh, hope you'll forgive the intrusion, but it's important I talk to you. I am sorry. I'm very busy. Well, this won't take long. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Yes, I'm a friend of Robert Foch. Robert never introduced us? Well, naturally. There was no need to. I do not believe you. Okay. And how would I know you two pitched a battle royal in the Hotel Splendide over Helene Grant? Robert told you that? Oh, Robert tells me everything. Uh, incidentally, you don't have to worry about Helene anymore. She's dead. Not really. Well, you don't seem very upset. Why should I be? She was my enemy. You don't realize what you're saying. But you knew this. You say Robert told you everything. Yeah, he also said you came back to the hotel again between 8 and 10. Robert said that? That's why, isn't it true? No. <laughs> I knew it. Je ne comprends pas. It's all right, Angel. 
But why should Robert say I was at his hotel when he was visiting here with me in my dressing room? He what? I said something wrong. Well, that depends on where you're standing. In my spot, it couldn't have been worse. You sure Robert was here between 8 and 10? Positive. Well, then he was telling the truth. Pardon? Uh, nothing. Uh, how did you find out about Helene Grant in the first place? A man told me. This man got a name? Yes, he called himself Mulai Hafid. Mulai Hafid, Mulai Hafid. Where did I hear that? Sure, he was Helene's contact in Casablanca. I do not understand. Well, that's just as well. Oh, that's my cue. I'm sorry. I must go. Oh, that's okay. So do I. Knock him dead, Angel. That's just what I hope to do for my customer. Cigarettes, candy, all American kinds, monsieur. You like to buy, monsieur? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, maybe some postcards. Very lovely lady. Uh -huh, I'm sorry, I stocked up in Paris. <laughs> Uh, where can I find a coppersmith, uh, Moulai Hafid? You are sure you would not like to buy the postcards? Oh, well, come to think of it, I guess I would. I, I forgot my grandmother collects them. Oh, she will like these, monsieur. And it will be 500 francs. Uh, there you are. Now, uh, where can I find Moulai Hafid? That is his shop over there, by the sign of the iron jug. Oh, thanks a lot. If your grandmother would like more postcards... I'll keep you in mind. Salam aleikum. I like him, Salam. What can I do for you, monsieur? Well, that all depends. Are you Mulai Hafid? Your servant, sir. I'm Mike Waring. Mike Waring? I'm a comrade from America. Oh. Where can we talk? Here. A little public, isn't it? I shall lower the shade. That's a nice place you got here. You do all your own metalwork? As my father and his father did before him. So, now <clears throat> we may talk. Well, I guess you know why I'm here. The party is awfully disappointed in your work, comrade. And I am disappointed in the party. Why did you tell Yasmin Marin about Helene Grant? You know this? We know everything. Then you are aware I informed Mademoiselle Grant of my desire to leave the party. Well, it's getting to be an epidemic. First Robert Forsh, and now you. What's your reason? I explained that to Comrade Grant. She found it unsatisfactory. It was her privilege. Mm -hmm. So you killed her. Monsieur is pleased to jest. You knew she was murdered. All Casablanca is aware of this. Yes, I know, but I think you had inside information. And how would you like to take a little ride with me? I do not think I would care for it. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to insist, Moulin. Uh, first... Allow me to show you something. This copper flask was fashioned by my father. Well, what's that got to do with... Permit me to finish. If you met a friend, you might offer him a drink by removing the stopper, so... Well? But if you met an enemy, you again removed the stopper, only this time you pressed this plunger to reveal... Oh, a knife, hmm? Huh? Oui, monsieur. A knife. And I have met a enemy. Here, monsieur, permit me. Huh? I think a little brandy would not harm you. Oh, Inspector Boulanger. <laughs> I told you we would meet again. <laughs> Ow. You are in pain? I'll live. How did you know where to find me? A friend of our department advised us. His name isn't Moulai Hafid. It is indeed. Would you like to tell me what happened? Yes, I'd like to very much. He tried to kill me. It is understandable, n'est-ce pas? Not to me. You posed as a Comintern agent. So? So naturally, Moulai thought you would come to his shop to avenge the murder of Mademoiselle Grant. Then that proves he killed her. Why? Because he desired to protect himself from one he considered an assassin? I tell you, he murdered her, Inspector. He wanted to leave the party, and she wouldn't let him. That is true of Robert Foch, too. Well, I grant you that, but Foch has an alibi. So has Moulin. What? Nine o'clock last night, he was stationed in the lobby of the Hotel Splendide, accompanied by one of my men. But well, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't? 
No, if Moolai, Robert, and Yasmin have alibis for the time of Helene Grant's murder, who does that leave? You, monsieur, as I maintained all along. I am so glad we are finally in accord. Are you looking forward to a vacation or to holiday weekends filled with carefree relaxation? Unfortunately, a lot of us will never have those pleasant plans come true. Yes, for thousands of those dreams will turn into tragic nightmares because of a traffic accident. Highways are more crowded than ever, and make no mistake about it, that means greater danger whenever you drive. You can't prevent all of the traffic accidents that are taking place all over the country, but you can prevent that one accident that may happen to you. Follow the simple rules of driving safety all the time. The life you save may be your own. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, I guess Mama was right. She always said if I didn't watch that big tongue of mine, someday I'd trip over it. But who knew it was going to be in the shop of Moulai Hufford? While I lay there on the floor, Inspector Boulanger made like Florence Nightingale. Just raise your arm a little higher. I figured there was no percentage in getting up. Right. After all, I was only due to now fall flat on my face again. And voila. <laughs> I think this will prove satisfactory. Now, if you will take my arm, monsieur, I shall be only too happy to assist you. No, no. Wait a minute, Inspector. If you're thinking of making another escape, I beg you not to attempt it. I have three men stationed outside, all of whom are fleet of foot and excellent shots. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Uh, you say you had one of your detectives with Moulai Hoffert in the lobby of the Splendide last night? I did. Why? We were keeping Robert Foch under surveillance. We anticipated a little difficulty with the gentleman. Obviously, it never developed. Obviously. And Moulai was never out of your man's sight? Never once. They were together till midnight. Well, they couldn't have been... Or could they? Pardonnez-moi? Oh, brother, am I a chump. Listen, Inspector, I think I see it all now. Just give me ten minutes with Robert Forsh. That's all I ask. It is not unreasonable. After all, why shouldn't you have Forsh for ten minutes when I expect to have you for life? Allons, mon enfant. Hello, Yasmin. Monsieur Waring? Yeah. What happened to you? Ask me better what didn't. We'd like to see Robert. You cannot. Well, maybe I cannot, but this gentleman can. He's Inspector Boulanger of the Prefecture. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Now, where's your boyfriend? I tell you, he is not here. Then you won't mind if we search the place? You are wasting your time. Now, let's try the bedroom. Go right ahead. It will avail you nothing. I fear she's telling the truth. Regard, his clothes are gone. I'm afraid you will not have your ten minutes with him. Well, I'll settle for a couple with her. All right, where did he go, Yasmin? I do not know. You're lying. You must have planned to meet him somewhere. You will never find out. Oh, I wouldn't bet on it, Angel. Why did you lie to me about meeting Robert in your dressing room last night? I did not lie. He was there. No, he wasn't. That alibi was strictly a phony. No. Boulanger had a couple of men downstairs. They would have seen him go out. He did not kill that woman. No one said he did. But you claim his alibi was fabricated. The one he volunteered was. He said he spent the evening with Yasmin. But if he was lying... It follows she couldn't have been with him. Then where was I? Over at the Bonaparte, killing the woman you thought was your rival. You are insane. Oh, no, you're the one who's insane. And it was that old green-eyed monster that did the trick. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. No, you, you don't. You let me go. I'm sorry it had to work out like this, Angel, but it was either you or me. I guess when you come right down to it, I'm no gentleman. Well, it merely goes to prove, Waring, the poets knew what they were talking about. Hmm? What is that line again? Oh, yes. Hail at no fury like a woman scorned. Oh, like a woman who thinks she's scorned. Actually, Helene wasn't Yasmin's rival. Perhaps she was. A man who embraces the communist party can afford no other love. Well, you got a point there. So I was not completely wrong when I said this was a political murder. No, not completely. Let me assure you, Waring, we of Casablanca are forever in your debt. If there is any way we can ever repay you... Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Inspector, because there is. 
Uh, while I was looking for Moolai Hafid, I ran into a peddler who made me buy some postcards before he'd give out with any information. I see. You think you could locate him for me? You wish to have him arrested? No, no. Uh, I promised to mail these to Grandma, and it just occurred to me, um, I'd better get a set for Grandpa, too. Good night, Inspector. <laughs> The Case of the Lonely Hunter. The Case of the Lonely Hunter. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring takes a trip down the Nile and learns some crozes can be murder. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert. Written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Ann Shepard as Yasmin. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Iris. No, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. I'm on my way to Cairo. No, Cairo, Egypt. The land of the pharaohs. Mm -hmm. Seems someone there started a new pyramid club, and army intelligence wants me to find out if they're paying off in lead. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Lonely Hunter. The boy who first said there's no place like home must have had me in mind. But I never realized how much truth there was in those five words till Army Intelligence picked up my option and sent me flying to Egypt. And if you think I'm the only one who feels this way, you might query Vince Torrio. Mr. Torrio is a rugged-looking gent sharing a table with the character wearing the tarbush in the Cafe El Cala near the Arab quarter of Cairo. Vince is a long way from home, and obviously that's where he feels charity begins. Go on, beat it. Bakshish, miss. I said beat it. Arms for the love of Allah. Oh, how I hate this place. For my part, they can take it and give it back to the pharaohs. <laughs> you are not very charitable to a land that granted you asylum. Well, for my dough, Yusuvit stinks. Where I made my mistake was not going to Italy with Lucky. Lucky? He's the guy I told you about, the one I used to work for. Now, there was a sport, Hussein. When we went into a club in New York, all the flunkies used to knock themselves out. In the best places, too, not sores like this. Boy, would I love to see him again. Then why did you come here? Because I was a big schmo, that's why. Lucky would have taken me with him in a minute, but no, I had to come to Egypt. Romantic land of the Nile. Well, you watch how fast I shake the Sahara dust off my shoes when I make a score. I gather you mean money. That's exactly what I mean. Then I have a proposition that might interest you. A friend of mine has two kilos of pure opium he would like smuggled into Morocco. What do we pay? One hundred pounds. We could share it equally. Uh-uh. Include me out. I'm not taking a chance of winding up in your local flea bag for that kind of... D- well, I'll be... Carol! Carol Morgan! Beg your pardon? What's the matter, baby? Don't you remember me, Vince Torrio? I'm afraid you're making a mistake. Are you kidding? I'd recognize you... Any trouble, darling? No, Abdul. This gentleman thought I was someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I did. No hard feelings? No, of course not. Shall we go, Abdul? Anytime you're ready, dear. I think you might enjoy seeing the Citadel. It was built by Saladin in the 12th century. Well, that's one for the book. The eyes play strange tricks, eh? Huh? What'd you say, Yosef? 
Uh, you were mistaken about the young lady. No, I wasn't. It's Carol Morgan, all right. It sure is a small world. Remember me telling you about this guy Lucky I used to work for? Well, Carol was his girl. I wonder who that character was with her. Uh, perhaps I can be of some assistance. He's Abdul Sarim Bey. Where'd he pick up that accent? Uh, I believe he attended Oxford. Loaded, huh? If you mean wealthy, the answer is yes. Well, what do you know? Leave it to little Carol to land on her feet. You think you could uh, scout around and find out where she's staying? You have an idea? I have a couple. You know something, Yusuf? I was wrong about Egypt. This could be the land of opportunity. Who is this? Ground service. Just a moment, please. Hello, Carol. I guess I should have known. I guess you should have. Hey, this is quite a layout. You ought to see the dump where I'm staying. I swear the flies are so What thick. do you want, Vince? Well, you might at least ask me to sit down. After <laughs> all, it's been how long? Six years since I saw you? Incidentally, what do you hear from Lucky? Nothing. I bet that's because he don't know where to contact you. And he's not going to find out. There's no reason he should. Live and let live is my motto. Hey, mine. What are you getting at, Vince? Well, you were just a young kid when you met Lucky. What did you know? Should have known better. You're being hard on yourself, Carol. Anyone's entitled to make a mistake. You just weren't used to the big league. I learned fast enough. But that's all behind me, Vince. I haven't done anything in the last six years I wouldn't want anyone to know about. Does that go for the uh, Sultan? The Sultan? That character you were, the one with the fez, his name is Abdul Salim Bey, isn't it? How did you find that out? A friend of mine, Yusuf Ben Ali, told me. Yusuf says, uh, he's loaded. If it's money you want. What kind of a heel do you take me for? Then what do you want? You know, I always had a yen for you. What? Of course, I couldn't say anything while Lucky was around. But now it's different. Let me go. Oh, now don't tell me you've fallen for the Sultan. I said let me go. Okay, baby. That's the way you want it. I can play like that, too. Ow! I was going to be nice, but you wouldn't let me. Okay, what do you think the Sultan will say when he finds out who you are? You wouldn't tell him. How much do you got? $800. Don't make me laugh. What about all that jewelry Lucky gave you? I gave it back. What do you call that rock on your finger? That's my own. Well, take it off. Come on, come on, Carol, give. <laughs> now will you get out? Sure. But I'll be running into you again. We old friends ought to stick together. I'll be seeing you, baby. Oh, Captain. Will you slow down to about ten knots? I don't want Miss Morgan to miss this. Look, Carol. Over there. That's old Cairo. Those ruins are part of the Roman fortress of Babylon. Hmm? Better pay attention to how I'm going to ask questions later. I'm sorry, Abdul. That's all right, darling. Now, that island we're passing is the island of Rhoda. According to our tradition, that's where Pharaoh's daughter found Moses and the bulrushes. That's very interesting. Is it? What do you mean? There's something bothering you. Oh, you're wrong. Whatever it is, I want you to feel you can tell me. Well, there's nothing to tell. That man you met yesterday in the Café El Cala... I told you he was mistaken. You heard him admit it. He knew your name. He knew nothing of the kind. You know how I feel about you, darling. But does that give you a license to pry into my private affairs? I never maintained it did. Well, then for heaven's sake, stop needling me. Carol. And take that hurt look out of your eyes. It doesn't do a thing for you. Now go away and leave me alone. Yes? Have I the pleasure of speaking with His Excellency Abdul Salim Bey? Who is this? I am called Yusuf Ben Ali. Yusuf Ben Ali? 
I could not expect His Excellency to recognize the name. I am unworthy of such honor, though our paths have crossed. I was in the Café El Cala yesterday with a foreigner when His Excellency entered with the American lady. So? So my companion, too, came from America. His name is Vincent Torrio. If I can offer a suggestion, you might find it to your advantage to investigate the gentleman. Why are you telling me all this, Yusuf? As it says in the Koran, we Muslims should be helpful to one another. Who knows? Someday you may be of some small service to me. May Allah show you the way? That you, Yusuf? Yes. Wait a minute. Come on. Hello, Vince. Who the devil are you? You don't remember? No. Well, it's been a long time. The name is Waring, Mike Waring. Oh, sure. You're that private dick they call a falcon. It comes back to you now? Yeah, but I uh, don't remember inviting you in. Well, you just forgot your manners. Uh, what in the world ever possessed you to move into a dump like this? I like the view. Yeah, I bet on a clear day you can see eight million flies. Lucky he did much better for himself. I hear tell he's got a villa in Italy that's out of this world. How come you two separated when you were deported? None of your business. No, but it's Uncle Sam's. I'm working for him these days. What are you babbling about? Cigarette? I asked you something, Waring. Well, it's come to Uncle's attention that narcotics are being smuggled into the States by way of Egypt. We've got a hunch the traffic is being directed by Lucky from Italy. What's that got to do with me? Well, isn't it strange I find you in Cairo? And... I'm studying to be a Muslim. Oh. And what's Carol Morgan's reason? Who? Lucky's old girlfriend. Is she here? You mean you didn't know? No. It's funny. I tailed a boy to a hotel yesterday who looked exactly like you. A look, wise guy. Well, you can't blame me for being suspicious, Vince. With you and Carol in Cairo, it looks like the gathering of the clan. I tell you, I haven't seen her. Isn't that her diamond ring? Huh? You shouldn't leave it lying around, Vince. It's much too valuable. How come she gave it to you? She's crazy for me. <laughs> well, there's no accounting for taste. I guess I'll take a little ride over to the Ministry of the Interior. Like to join me? Not on your life. Come on, fella. I said not on your life, and I mean it. Oh, I'll put away that gun, Vince. You know you wouldn't use it. Wouldn't I? Well, yeah, I guess you would. So, in that case... Get I... back. Well, you can't hate a guy for trying. Who can't? Personally, I can hate him like poison. Oh. Hurry with that, Walter Mohammed. I believe our friend is coming too. Thank you. I'll give it to him. Oh. Try some of this, Mr. Wedding. What? What is it? Just water, unfortunately. Oh. Where am I? Oh. I'm afraid your headaches are just beginning, sir. What the devil are you talking about? Mohammed, will you be good enough to lift the blanket? You recognize the gentleman? Uh, it's Vince Torrio. It was, Mr. Torrio. It will probably come as no shock to you. He was stabbed to death. Who did it? I imagine you'd be in the best position to know. Now, wait a minute. Where do you get off asking these questions? Uh, forgive me. I should have introduced myself. My name is Abdul Salam Bey. Oh, I thought I recognized your fez. I've seen you with Carol Morgan. You're a friend of Miss Morgan's? Not exactly. Well, would you care to tell me your version of the affair here? Why should I? Because I found you right next to Mr. Torrio's body and as chief assistant to the Minister of the Interior. Oh, don't give me that. I met the chief assistant. His name is Hassan Pasha. You must have met him a week ago. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, when King Farouk abdicated, naturally there was a shake-up in the local police. I now hold the position of chief assistant. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'd love you to see our new headquarters. But frankly, old chap, I don't think you like them one bit.
Last year, thousands of Americans who tried to get away with carelessness on the highways were killed or permanently injured in traffic accidents. Unless you are meticulous in your observance of the rules of highway safety, you and your loved ones are vulnerable to the menace of traffic accidents. Every motorist and pedestrian should take an active role in supporting the safety movement in his or her community. Remember, the life you save may be your own. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. They say there's nothing like travel to broaden one. And that must be true, because Egypt certainly flattened me out. And they really kill themselves to make things interesting for tourists. Look at me. After I was slugged by Vince Torrio, I come to find Vince on the floor beside me with a knife in his back. And if that isn't enough, standing over us is a big shot in the local police named Abdul Salim Bey. Now, that's service for you. I hate to rush you, Mr. Waring, but any time you're ready... Now, wait a minute, Abdul. You don't seriously believe I murdered him. You admit quarreling with Mr. Torrio. Yes, and he knocked me silly. So when did I have a chance to kill him? I was unconscious when you found me. You might have been shamming. Okay... Then riddle me this. If I was faking, why didn't I beat it before you arrived? You probably didn't have the opportunity. You're real anxious to pin this on me, aren't you? That's unfair, Mr. Waring. My only motive is to see justice done. Mm -hmm. Even if Carol Morgan is involved? I beg your pardon. You should. Did you know Carol and Vince Torrio were old friends? You're lying. I tailed her to a hotel yesterday. Suppose he was blackmailing her. Ridiculous. Then why did she give him that diamond ring... All right, Abdul. What did you do with it? Do with it? There was a ring on that table when I walked in. And you think I removed it? Yes, I do, to protect Carol. You're mistaken, my friend. Well, we'll see about uh, that. Just a moment, Mr. Waring. Where do you think you're going? Over to see Carol. No, you're not. Oh, does this mean I'm under arrest? I thought that was fairly obvious. Okay, Abdul. Who are you calling? The American ambassador. Operator. Operator. That won't be necessary. Oh, may I go? Yes. However, I must caution you... Not to go too far away. On the contrary, old man. You can't go far enough to please me. I shall notify your ambassador my government finds you persona non grata. Which means... You have six hours to leave Egypt. And what about him? Mr. Torrio? It's no problem. After all, when a man commits suicide... Suicide? <laughs> oh, that's a hot one. I suppose he stabbed himself in the back. Exactly. What? You forget, this is the mysterious Egypt. The strangest things can happen here. If I were you, old man, I'd bear that in mind. Carol? Yes. This is Abdul. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you called. I want to apologize. Uh, that isn't I... necessary. Carol, do you love me? You know I do. Then you must have confidence in my judgment. There's a Michael Waring on his way over to see you. Michael Waring? He was formerly a private investigator in the States. At present, he's with American intelligence. What does he want with me? There's no reason for alarm. If he asks you if you know a Vincent Torrio, deny it. But I, I don't know him. That's fine, darling. You just stick to that story. Listen, Abdul. Later, sweetheart. Right now, time is of the essence. Just remember, you never heard of Vincent Torrio. Yes? Hello, Carol. Remember me? Should I? Well, I like to think I made some kind of an impression. The name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Mm hmm Oh, of course, you're that private detective they call the Falcon. Yeah, shh, not so loud. I'm trying to live it down. May I come in? Why not? I've got nothing to hide. Uh, are you sure? Positive. Sit down. Thanks. What are you doing in Egypt? Well, I was just about to ask you that. Lucky's in Italy, isn't he? I wouldn't know. I haven't seen him since he was deported. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you hear from Vince Torrio? Who? Well, now, don't tell me you've forgotten good old Vince... How could I forget him when I never knew him in the first place? He used to work for Lucky. Lucky never mixed business with pleasure. 
Well, just the same, you might be interested to learn that Vince was murdered. Really? I'm sorry to hear that. I'd imagine you'd be glad. Keeps him from spilling anything about your past to your new boyfriend. My boyfriend? Abdul Salim Bey. Suppose we leave Abdul out of this. I wish I could, but uh, he thinks I'm the guilty critter. Are you? You know better, Angel. Then who is? Oh, I can think of several possibilities. You, for one. I told you I didn't even know the man. Well, it won't wash, Carol. He was up to see you yesterday. You're mistaken. When he walked out, he had a diamond ring that... Well, how about that? How about what? I see you wearing it again. Last time I saw it, Vince had it in his room. Are you suggesting... I'm suggesting there's only one way you could have gotten it back. You took it after you killed Vince. Get out! No. Okay, but I'll be back. If only to turn the other cheek. Take care of yourself, Angel. I wish I had time to. Uh, Yusuf Ben Ali? Who goes there? The friend. Salam Alakim. Alakim Salim. Uh, you, Yusuf? I can be of service to you? Yes, indeed you can. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Vince Torrio suggested I look you up. You are acquainted with him? Well, acquainted is hardly the word. Uh, we spent a nice couple of hours together this afternoon. Vince tells me you know Cairo like no one else. Oh, he's most kind. You uh, familiar with the Savoy Hotel? I was once employed there as a porter. Oh, well, then this ought to be a steal. And there's a young lady staying there named Carol Morgan. Think you could get into her room? Mm, may I inquire for what purpose? She's wearing a diamond ring. I'd like you to get it for me. You are not suggesting I steal it? Mm-hmm. By the beard of Allah, I am offended. Well, I'm sorry, Yusuf. Guess I got the wrong boy. Oh, if you know anyone who wants to make himself a fast hundred pounds... Uh, uh, you will pay one hundred pounds for the ring? On delivery. Uh, please be seated. You're no longer offended? How could I possibly be? You are Vincent Torrio's friend, and any vin uh, friend of Mr. Torrio's is a friend of mine. It will be a pleasure to be of service to you. Ministry of Interior. Have I the honor of speaking with His Excellency Abdul Salim Bey? Who is this? Your servant, sir, Yusuf Ben Ali. What is it, Yusuf? I wish to prove my sincerity. Twenty minutes ago, I was approached in the Café El Cala by a gentleman named Michael Waring. Well? He had an illegal proposition for me. He wished me to enter the hotel room of the American lady, Carol Morgan, and steal her ring. Really? He offered me 100 pounds sterling for the task. Uh, did I not do well in informing you? You are most wise, Yusuf. I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. Accommodate Mr. Waring. His Excellency does not mind? On the contrary. His Excellency insists on it. Just advise me when the theft is successfully accomplished. May Allah aid you in your task. <laughs> Yusuf! Yusuf, over here! Ah, Mr. Waring. Did you get the ring? It has been said of Yusuf Ben Ali that failure and he are strangers. Uh, uh, Miss Morgan gave it up with scarcely a struggle. Uh, I knew I picked the right boy. All right, let's have it. Uh, the gentleman is forgetting something. Huh? I was promised a hundred pounds. Oh, yes, that's right. You were. Fifty, seventy, eighty-five... A hundred, there you are. Oh, you are most kind. And now I am happy to complete my end of the bargain. Ah, come to Papa. It is permitted to ask to what purpose you intend to put this ornament? Yes, it is indeed. This is the little gimmick that's uh, going to give us Vince Torrio's killer. What? Oh, didn't I tell you? Vince is now in the land of Osiris. But who well, that's did... That's the question of the hour. But I've got a hunch this ring will provide the answer. I'm so happy for you, Mr. Waring. What? Huh? Oh, please keep your seats, gentlemen. In case you've forgotten, I'm Abdul Salem Bey. I didn't forget... What you failed to remember was that I gave you six hours to leave Cairo. I'll get out in time. I doubt it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the ring you're holding is the property of Miss Carol Morgan. How would you know that? Elementary old man, I gave it to her. What? 
And since I now find it in your possession, it forces me to one conclusion. You're a receiver of stolen merchandise. Now, wait a minute, you're perhaps, wrong. Perhaps I am. Here I gave you six hours to leave my country, and I'm afraid we're going to have to play host to you for the next five to ten years. I guess it proves even the best of us make mistakes. On the highway, speed is the number one killer. It takes more than half of the lives lost in traffic accidents in many states. Last year, speeding drivers caused 15,000 deaths in the United States, and that year, more than 500,000 persons were injured in automobile accidents blamed on excessive speed. Initiate and support your local enforcement drives against speeders, and remember, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, Mama warned me there would be days like this, but she neglected to mention they come once a week. No, Mama wouldn't have approved. She would have hated the Cafe El Cala. She has a sinus condition, and the smoke in the joint would have played the devil with it. And it was certainly no place for her boy. When you're caught with a hot piece of ice in your hands, you can't very well insist it's a frame. But obviously, Abdul Salim Bey didn't think it was going to stop me from trying. I suppose you'll maintain you're a victim of circumstance, Mr. Waring. Uh, you boys are pretty cute. Why, what in the world do you mean? You and Yosef cooked up this little stunt between you. I swear on the Koran. Now, cut it out, Yosef. You're breaking my heart. Really, Mr. Waring, I'm surprised at you. You expect me to believe this is all coincidental? Frankly, old man, I don't care what you believe. Well, you should. Because I had no idea this ring was stolen. I bought it in good faith. That's most amusing. Well, if you search him, you'll find a hundred pounds. I paid him. No doubt. But you knew the ring was Miss Morgan's property, and you hired Yusuf to secure it for you. I wouldn't insist on that theory. Why not? Might prove very embarrassing to Carol. The last time I saw it was in Vince Torrio's room shortly before he was murdered. And if Yusuf here got it from Miss Morgan, you see where that takes you. I'm afraid not. Well, you're not looking in the right place. Suppose we adjourn to Carol's hotel room and do a little peeking there. And I hope for your sake she can stand an investigation. I assure you, darling, there's nothing to worry about. I just want you to answer a few questions. Uh, suppose you let me phrase them, Abdul. Carol, you recognize this man? No. The lady is mistaken. That's enough out of you, Yusuf. Sweetheart, I promise you there's no reason to be frightened. But you must tell the truth. Do you know him? His name is Yusuf Ben Ali. Yes, he was up here about an hour ago. What happened? He stole a ring. That's all? Yes. Is this it? Yes. Take a good look, Angel. You're sure it's the same one? Absolutely. Well, I say a diamond is the hardest substance in the world, so let's see. Put away that knife. Now, don't worry, Abdul. I'm just performing a little experiment. What the devil are you doing? You call it. You've marred the stone. Mm -hmm. Then obviously it wasn't a diamond. I don't understand. No, but you do, don't you, Carol? No. You're lying. This is a paste copy of the ring Abdul gave you. I tell you, you're wrong. Come on, admit it. You gave the genuine article to Vince Torrio. Well, didn't you? Yes. Carol. I'm sorry, Abdul. What for? That proves you didn't kill him. What? Well, a killer walked off with the McCoy, and if you had it, you would have worn it instead of this phony. Then the motive for Torrio's murder... It was old-fashioned robbery. Right, Yosef? How would I know? Who would know better? You walked in on Vince while I was out cold. You thought it was too good a chance to miss, so you murdered him, waltzed off with the rock, figuring I'd be blamed for both. Oh, you are wrong by the beard. No, no, I... no. There's no reason to go modest on the folks, Yosef. You did a nice piece of work. I wouldn't think of letting anyone else take the credit. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I appreciated your assistance, Waring. I don't know what, I, what I'd have done without you. But you'd rather, hmm? Well, you can appreciate my position. Oh, sure. You thought I was going to nail either you or Carol for Vince's murder. Actually, I didn't care about myself. Though I suppose you considered me a suspect all along. No, no, I didn't. If you had killed Vince and taken the ring, somewhere or other, you would have arranged for Carol to get it back. The fact that she was wearing the copy proved both of you were innocent. I... Hey, what are we stopping here for? Isn't this your hotel? Well, yes. Well, you'll have to start packing if you plan to leave Egypt within the six hours I gave you. Now, wait a minute. I hope you don't take this personally, old man, but 
You're such a troublemaker, I'd just as soon not have you around. But you can't kick me out. I'm an American citizen. Farouk was king of all Egypt. Oh, and you did it to him. Exactly. Bon voyage, Mr. Wedding. The Case of the Rolling Stones. The Case of the Rolling Stones. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns what it takes to make some people settle down is nothing short of murder. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Elspeth Eric as Carol. This program came from New York, Fred Collins speaking. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lisa. Uh, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is sending me to Sicily. That's right. The island off the coast of Italy. Uh -huh. Seems some boy down there is running wild with a knife, and they hope I might offer just the kind of proposition he might like to take a stab at. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Rolling Stones. Anyone who thinks hide-and-seek is strictly for kids ought to take a look at Mario Gentili. Mario's been playing the game for years, and very successfully, too. But then look what he'll do not to be caught. 24 hours ago, he was in Naples, where he grabbed the night boat for Palermo, Sicily. And while the ship plowed through the Straits of Messina, Mario made like a butterfly. When he emerged from his cocoon, his brown hair was dyed black, and his mustache was gone. Six hours later... The new Mario is relaxing in a furnished room off the Via Vittorio Emanuel in Palermo. But even the best of us have to be it once in a while. And if you believe in sound effects, this may be Mario's turn now. Who? Who is it? It's Eda, Mario. Who? Eda Casalini. Un momento. Oh, my darling. No, stop it, Eda. Oh, forgive me, but it's been so long. Who told you I was in Palermo? No one. Then how did you find out? Every night I watched the boat from Naples, hoping someday you would return. Tonight my wish was granted. How did you recognize me? <laughs> it would take more than dyed hair to fool a woman in love. Oh, Mario, why did you leave me? Because I had business to attend. There was not another woman? No. You lied. I saw a girl with you that morning you left. She was a business associate. I'll kill her if I ever see her again. Don't be a fool. <laughs> Now, get out. No, no, I did not mean it, Mario. Give me one more chance. Will you behave? I swear on my father's grave. All right. You won't regret it, darling. If there is anything I can do. There is. Can you get in touch with Bianca Naldi for me? Is she the one? You are talking like a fool. I must see Bianca. Mario. Shh. Open up, Gentile. There is no one here by that name. We know better. This is the place. You idiot. You let them here. Oh, darling, I was most careful. You might as well surrender, Mario. We have the building surrounded. Listen, Edda. Hmm. There is a staircase in the kitchen. It leads to the roof. I will not go without you. You will do as I say. Oh. If anyone asks you, you've been hanging wash up there. Now hurry. When will I see you? Sooner than you think. Now go. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. This is your last chance, Gentile. Are you going to open this door? Or shall I have my men break it down? That won't be necessary, Trente. All right, Sergente. Take three men, search the place. See, si, my Trente. And John, regards. See, si, I never thought about that. 
What is the meaning of this? May I see your papers, please? My papers? Of course. <laughs> but I assure you that your superior officer will... Uh... Yes? <laughs> I, I seem to have mislaid them. I submit you never had them to begin with. What is your name? Mario Gentile. It was not always so, was it? You were once known as Mario Toselli. You are insane. But uh, you know who Mario Toselli is? I have no idea. Well, if you will be kind enough to accompany me to the Palazzo Chiaramonte, I will be only too happy to enlighten you. After you, signore? <laughs> Tenente, uh, forgive me if I seem ungrateful for your hospitality, but I've been here for three hours and I've yet to learn the charges against him. Patience is a great virtue, Mario. You should cultivate it. As it happens, we are waiting for an American. An American? A gentleman named Michael Waring. Perhaps you have heard of him? No. A distinguished personality. He was once a private investigator in the United States called the Falcon. A very colorful name, no? No. A matter of taste. Today he is with American intelligence. It is of no interest to me. Well, I am sure you will be of interest to Senor Waring. You see, uh, Avanti. Hello, Lieutenant. Michael, my good friend. Uh, how are you, Emilio? Better now, as I regard your countenance. <laughs> I did not expect you till noon. Well, I flew over as soon as I got your message. Ah, it aroused your curiosity. No end. What's it all about? Uh, first, I should like you to meet Mario Gentile. Mario, this is Signor Waring. I am delighted. Well, I'm not. Look, Lieutenant, you didn't bring me all the way from Rome to meet him. Well, you are familiar with his reputation. Yeah, he's an organizer for the Communist Party. And that does not arouse your interest? No, the party is not Lord Italy. Ah, but suppose I told you in an earlier day he had another name. Prior to 1945, he was known as Mario Toselli. Toselli? Ah, you recognize it. Yeah, sure, the Allied War Crimes Commission has been looking for him for years. They've got a rope necktie they'd like to try on him for size. This is absurd. I never even heard of the man. And you're the only one in Italy who hasn't. The Sully organized a squadra d'azioni and the Militia Voluntaria for Sisti. They were Mussolini's personal strong arm squad. And think of it, Michael. Today we are honored by the presence of its founder. You are mistaken. Well, what were you doing in 1945? I was fighting with the partisans near Genoa. Who was your commander? You will not find any record for him. We were a small group. And prior to 45? I was in France. Doing what? That is my own affair. But I tell you, I'm not Toselli. Well, that should be easy enough to check. Lieutenant, didn't Toselli come from Messina? And... See. Si. Well, I'll take him there first thing in the morning. In the meantime, can you put him away on ice? I'd hate for him to spoil after all these years. Halt! Who goes there? It is only me, Your Honor. I wish to see the prisoner, Mario Gentili. It is not permitted. I have written authorization from Lieutenant Balbo. Let me see. You are holding it upside down. Hmm? Can't you read? Uh, do you take me for an illiterate? Of course I can. Uh, this is most strange. I was instructed that the you prisoner... You question the authority of the tenente? Of course not. What do you have in that basket? Some food for my cousin. See? A bottle of wine and some cheese. All right. Edda. How are you, Mario? How in the name of... The lieutenant was most kind. You may have five minutes. We are most grateful, Your Honor. I warn you not to create any disturbance. How did you manage this, Edda? I had a pass. A pass? It was most official looking. Now there's a great artist. You should not have taken the chance. They will discover the forgery in a minute. A minute is all I require. I brought you some food, Mario. See, your favorite wine. Uh, my... my mother prepared especially for you. She hopes you will drink her health. Careful. <gasps> there is a stiletto in here. Huh? It may be thin, but it's made of the finest steel. Good girl. Now good you girl. know how much I love you. Oh, there was never any doubt in my mind. You'll be able to use it? Yes, indeed. Tomorrow I'll leave by railroad with the senior wearing for Messina. And this may be just the thing to relieve the monotony of the trip. Very good, very good. My thanks to your very dear mother. No 
What time have you got, Sergeant? Uh, it lacks ten minutes of one o'clock, Senor Waring. How's our friend Mario doing? He's asleep. Shall I waken him? No, there's plenty of time. I wonder if they got anything to read on this train. I saw a vendor in the next car. Well, now, if this were the super chief, all I'd have to do is buzz. If you were to like me... Uh, no, thanks. I'll do it myself. Keep an eye on Sleeping Beauty. You may rest easy, senor. Sergeant Giovanni Martelli has never betrayed a trust. Okay, Paisan. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> ah, I trust that you slept well, Comrade Mario. Huh? One observing you would think you had not a care in the world. I haven't, if you overlook these handcuffs. Uh, would you happen to have a cigarette? Oh, see. Si. Grazie. You know, Sergeant, you are a very good fellow. You know, you made a very definite impression on my cousin. Your cousin? The young lady who visited me in my cell yesterday. She thought you were very handsome. <laughs> she did? Yes. <laughs> She's the most attractive female herself. Hey. Uh, would you like her address? Uh, very much. Ah. Uh, she lives at numero 300 via 47. Well, why don't you write it down? Uh, I, uh, I will remember it. You said that uh, 300... Ah, uh, you cannot write, huh? <laughs> My schooling was interrupted at a tender age. Ah, si capisce. It's very understandable. <laughs> if you will remove the handcuffs, I will be very glad to do it for you. What? No, no, come, Sergeant. Certainly, you have no fear of me. A well-proportioned man like yourself. That was the first thing Edda noticed about you. Even that uniform couldn't hide those muscles. Eh, hard work, does it? Well? It is out of the question. Oh, of course. You are afraid of the American senor, eh? Sergeant Giovanni fears no one. Stick out your hand. Ah, many uh, thanks, my friend. Hurry. Yeah. Write it down before senor Waring returns. It will be a pleasure. I believe I had a pen in my pocket. Oh, yes. Hey, where did you get the knife? You're mistaken. There's a pen. Here. You can feel the point. No, Mario. Yes, Sergeant. <laughs> yes, indeed. <sighs> I'm sorry it had to be you. I would have preferred it if it were Sergeant Wary. Arrivederci, Sergeante. I fear we shall never meet again. You and your children can expect to live long thanks largely to better medicine and surgery. But you could expect to live even longer were it not for the danger of automobile accidents. If driver education could be taught in all of our schools instead of only a third of them, it might someday help to save the life of your own son or daughter. Remember, in your own automobile, to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, that's Sicily for you, the land of hot tempers and cold steel. And when I got back to my compartment on the train, I found Mario Gentile was gone. But the good sergeant was still waiting. He was huddled on the floor, the blood pouring from half a dozen wounds. Yeah, Giovanni had reached the end of the line. But I had a hunch the big attraction for Mario was in Palermo, where we all started. So I headed back for the Hotel Rodolfo to await further developments. And they weren't long in coming. Excuse me, please. I'm looking for the Signor Michael Waring. Oh, come in. My card, Signor? Cesare de Lavoro. See, si, it was suggested by the Lieutenant Balbo that I see you. Uh, well, sit down. Grazie, Signor. You care to join me? Uh, later, perhaps. All right, what can I do for you, de Lavoro? You have it within your power to save my life. Huh? You had in your custody yesterday a man who has called himself Mario Gentile. That was not his right name. How would you know? Because I have known him since 1934. In those days, he was known as Mario Toselli. You sure of that? Positive. We were almost inseparable. I see. I assure you, Signor, I was not a fascist. I knew Toselli purely in a social way. He was in love with a woman named Margarita Pecci. I took her away. Uh, let me get this straight. She sir. honored me by becoming my wife. Oh. And how did Toselli take that? Oh, most badly. He swore to kill us both 
It was only by going to France that we managed to escape his vengeance. Mm -hmm. And you think... He uh... returned to Palermo to keep his oath. For myself, I do not care, senor, but Marguerite... Uh, Does she know Mario was in Palermo? All Sicily knows. The papers have carried little else. It was her idea I consult the carabinieri. Where's your wife now? Well, she waits for me at Laura's hotel. Laura? Uh, Laura Reynolds. She's an old friend of Margarita. What does she look like? Well, she's most attractive. No, no, no. I mean, is she a blonde, a brunette? Well, why? Well, a woman visited Mario Gentili in his cell before he escaped, and we've got a hunch she supplied the stiletto. Oh, it could not be Laura. Why not? Well, she's an American. Oh, I see. All right, tell your wife not to worry, De Lavoro. Not that that will stop her, but I promise you we'll do everything we can. <laughs> Quattro, cinque. Is the clock right, Laura? No, it's a couple of minutes slow, Margarita. But Cesare promised to call by four. Something must have happened to him. Maybe he was hit by a car. How can you say such things? It's real easy. You never liked my husband. I never liked spinach either, so what does that prove? As far as Cesare is concerned... I will not permit you to say another word against him. Margarita, all I... I refuse to listen. Ever since... That must be Cesare now. Come in. I uh, trust you ladies will excuse me, but uh, I am searching for the Signora de Lavoro. I am Margarita de Lavoro. I kiss your hand, Signora. I recognize you immediately from your husband's description. I am Antonio Lombardi. Antonio Lombardi? Did Cesare not call and advise you I was to drive you home? No. That is most strange. That is the understatement of the week. No capisco? Oh, uh, forgive me, Signor Lombardi. This is my old friend, Laura Reynolds. Delighted. Oh, it's my pleasure. Why didn't Cesare come here himself? Uh, with the problem at hand, he thought it best not to take chances. What about... It has all been taken care of. Shall we go? Yes, of course. Goodbye, Laura. Uh, Marguerite, wait a minute. No, sorry, dear. I do not wish to keep Cesare waiting. Uh, well, uh, call me the minute you get home. I've got the strangest feeling... Your concern does you credit, signorina. But uh, you need not to worry. Rest assured, I shall take care of her uh, properly. Arrivederci. Signor Lombardi. Si? Did you not say we were to meet Cesare at home? Did I? Yes. Then so be it. I would never think to contradict a lady. But this is not the way to Via Toledo. We are going south. There is the marina. The sea is over there. <laughs> well, the miracles never cease. I would have sworn. Uh, what are you stopping here for? For this. <gasps> a gun? You must understand, my dear. I bear no grievance against you personally, but my employer. Who is your employer? Would you care to venture a guess? No, I don't have to. I know. Uh, let yeah. go, you fool. Let go before I... Uh, oh. Why must you women always be so difficult? Is that you, Margarita? No, it's Mike Waring. Oh, just a moment. Senor Waring, this is a surprise. Please come in. Thanks. I'm so sorry my wife is not here to meet you. She would be most honored. Uh, look, De Lavoro, there's something I've got to tell you. I just came from Lieutenant Balbo's office. He has apprehended Mario Gentile. Eh? No, not yet. Well, then what is it? But tell me, Senor, what is it? It's about your wife. Something has happened to her. Yes. But where is she? Where is she? You must take me to her at once. It wouldn't do any good. No, no. I'm afraid it's yes. He kept his promise. Uh-huh. I feel kind of helpless to Lavoro, but if there's anything I can do... No, no, senor, no one can help me. If you will be so kind as to leave me now, I would like to be alone for a while. Now, that's the story, Miss Reynolds. The Carabinieri found a body an hour ago. 
Naturally, I thought you should know. Oh, I had a feeling when I saw that man. Couldn't you trace him through the car? You tell me how. Well, I watched them from the window as they walked out. His car was parked right across the street. It wasn't the Blue Nash. How did you know? A tourist reported the stolen early this afternoon. Now, getting back to this Antonio Lombardi, what did he look like? Oh, well, he was about five foot five, dark hair, dapper. You sure it wasn't Mario Gentili? No, no, I'm positive. I've seen Gentili's picture. And he must have been an old comrade doing Mario a favor. Then why did he say Cesare sent him? Well, you don't think your friend Margarita would have gone with him if he admitted he came from Mario? Oh, why didn't Cesare call the way he promised? Because when he left me, he went into a huddle with Lieutenant Balbo at the Palazzo Calamante. Well, I still think it's strange. Well, that's your privilege. How long have you known De Lavaro? I met him at Cannes a year ago. And his wife? I met her at the same time. It's funny. I had an idea you and Margarita were practically sorority sisters. You know, I don't think I like your attitude. Well, I don't blame you. I don't like it myself. You mind if I use your phone? Go right ahead. Thanks. I uh, hope that's a local call. It is. I'd like to see how De Lavoro is getting along. I've got a feeling I shouldn't have left him. Hello? De Lavoro? Who is this? Mike Waring. Oh, in the name of heaven, Signor, where are you? I have been searching all over Palermo for you. Why, what's up? I just heard from Mario Gentile. When? Not more than five minutes ago. He said now that he had disposed of Margarita, it was my turn. Well, listen to Lavoro. I'm going to hang up. As soon as I do, I want you to call Lieutenant Balbo. It does not matter anymore, Signor. I just wish to thank you for all that you do. Hello. Hello. De Lavoro. What's the trouble? And you call it, Angel. But from where I'm sitting, it sounds like murder. Let's hope I'm wrong. Oh, he doesn't answer. You didn't really expect him to. All right, get out of the way. What are you going to do? Put my foot through the panel. There ought to be an easier way. Well, there is, but this is more fun, Laura. That ought to do it. Now, let's see if I can reach the lock from here. Entree, madame. Thank you. Oh, now what? Well, don't you notice anything unusual? Well, what do you expect me to do, scream? I had my hopes. Well, I'm sorry if I disappointed you. Oh. Now, that's what I call a double take. He, he isn't dead. No, see if there's any brandy around. Uh, you think he should have it? No, but I could stand a drink. Senor Waring. Now, don't talk. You, you, you got here a little late. Well, don't you worry, Delavoro. You're going to be fine. Oh, you cannot fool me, Senor. No, I mean it. It's practically a scratch. But it, it burns. Well, that's to be expected. Was it Mario Gentili? I couldn't say for sure. I did not see his face. Now, wait a second. What's this in the corner? Huh? Well, what do you know? Oh, it is a gun. Yep, it's what it is. A German Mauser. You know, it looks kind of familiar. Is it the same weapon that was used on... I wouldn't on... be surprised. You got a handkerchief? Uh, here. I finally managed to locate some brandy. Nice work, Angel. Give him a shot. Um, what about you? I'll take a rain check. Right now, I want to see Lieutenant Balbo. With a little luck, I think we can wrap this up. You, my friend, much as it pains me to disagree with you, you are wrong. Mario Gentile is not within 50 miles of Palermo. Then who took that shot at De Lavoro? The same assassin who killed his wife. No, I doubt it, Lieutenant. If a man is motivated by revenge, he'll want to do some of the trigger pulling himself. Otherwise, why did he come back to Sicily in the first place? Ah, that is a very good question. Uh, we got a million good questions. What we need is a couple of answers. Uh, you think your ballistics department is through checking the gun? Hmm. We shall see. Uh, uh, Sergeant, uh, Tenente Balbo, qui. I think to call arma. A ver. Hmm? <laughs> que interessant. <laughs> Bravo, grazie tante, Sergeant. Well, what did he say? <laughs> the gun was of German manufacture. It was a Mauser. Oh, tell me something I don't know. What about fingerprints? Not a one. Well, we expected that. I don't suppose they were able to run down the serial number. On the contrary, Michael. There they were most successful. Uh -huh. The gun was purchased two weeks ago in Naples. In Naples? And you will die when you hear the name of the man who bought it. Oh, don't tell me. Yes, it was purchased by an American named Michael Waring. Oh, no. You are upset? And I thought you would be delighted by the news. Uh, I guess there is no pleasing some people. We all shudder and shake our heads sadly over the catastrophes we hear about. The floods, explosions, and other accidents which take five or more lives. We wonder if it could happen to us, too. Well, there is one type of catastrophe to which most of us are exposed many times every day... 
if we drive or ride on the highways. It's the head-on collision between two motor vehicles. It means almost certain death or injury to the drivers and passengers of those vehicles involved. Take a lesson from the fatality figures and drive as though your life depends on it. It does. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there's one thing you can say about cops the world over. They all get the same look on their faces when they're pleased. And Lieutenant Balbo was wearing that look now. And no wonder. Here I'd been needling him about Mario Gentili, and it turns out the gun that killed Margarita de Lavoro belonged to me. A most revolting development. Well, my friend, what have you got to say for yourself? Well, very little. No wonder that gun looked familiar. Mario must have stolen it from my hotel room. But I was right about one thing. He's in Palermo. So it would appear. If there was one link we could find in the chain. Say, how far do your records go back on Gentile? As Gentile, only till 1950, when he came to Sicily as an organizer for the Communist Party. And you have no idea what he did before then? Only theories. But you don't know for sure? <laughs> no one does. <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong, Lieutenant. I know one thing now about our mystery man. What? How to trap him. And maybe Signor de Lavoro will be kind enough to furnish the bait. Let's ask him anyway. <laughs> In your wedding, I do not like this idea. I do not like it at all. Look, De Lavoro, either you have confidence in me or you don't. Well, I don't know about him, but I don't. Well, that's not too important, Laura. You're just part of the scenery. But I do not understand this business. It seems to me that I'm what you call a target. That's exactly what you are. Don't you see? It's our only chance of grabbing Mario. By this time, he knows he didn't kill you this afternoon. Well, if he's a man of his word... He'll return. That's what we're figuring on. But if he kills me... Not a chance. Lieutenant Balbo's got the place surrounded. Not entirely, Signore. Huh? You will oblige me by raising your hands. You're the doctor. Listen, Gentile. Ah, Signor Del Lavoro, I believe. Yes, yes. You know, you have taken the name of Mario Gentile in vain. Naturally, I am displeased. I can explain everything. But why? Explanations are so boring. Well, you're just going to stand there wearing? What else can I do? He's right, Signorina. You see, I am a man with a purpose. I do not intend to be frustrated. All right, Del Lavoro. If you have anything to say, now is the time. In heaven's name, have mercy. Wearing, I beg you. Stay where you are, signore. I swear, Gentile, I did not mean any harm. I did not think it would matter to you. It matters a great deal. Tell them the truth. I never saw this man before in my life. What? Continue. He was not responsible for Margarita's murder. I was. I hired the assassin. Mascalzoni! Oh. Mike. It's all right, Angel. It's all right? Uh, nothing wrong with him. He just fainted. But that bullet... It was a blank. Right, Paisan? Uh-huh. I don't get it. Allow me to introduce myself, signorina. I am Sergente Achille Bresci. Sergeant Bresci? Yeah, he's one of Lieutenant Balbo's boys. Well, you did a beautiful job of acting, Achille. Uh, so what good is it? With my luck, signore, I'll wager Rossellini wasn't even listening. Well, Mike, maybe I'm thick, but I've got to admit that I still don't get it. Oh, it isn't difficult, Laura. It all comes down to the fact that De Lavoro hired that man to murder his wife. Yes, but how did Mario Gentili figure in this? He didn't. I don't understand. Well, you see, when Mario escaped, it gave De Lavoro the bright idea. The papers had played up Mario as a man of mystery. Nobody knew anything about his background. So De Lavoro spread the story that Mario came to Sicily for the purpose of killing him and Margarita. Oh, yes, but she knew the truth. Uh, sure, but no one had a chance to ask her. She was murdered before either Balbo or myself could see her. Well, then, the shot we heard over the phone while De Lavoro was talking to you... Was self-inflicted. So you're guessing all this. Well, that's why we had to bait a trap. And when De Lavoro mistook Achille Bresci for Mario Gentili, that clinched it. You know, you're pretty clever. <laughs> you ought to see me do card tricks sometime. Aha, uh -huh, I'd love to. All right, I'll show you one of my favorites. Now, uh, let's pretend you're a woman and I'm a man, and we're all alone on the marina facing the sea. And then what happens? Well, that's what makes this such a wonderful trick, Angel. Even I don't know how it's going to turn out. The 
The Case of the Gorgeous Greek. The Case of the Gorgeous Greek. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that when Greece gets too hot, somebody is bound to catch the devil. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon, with Joan Allison as Lawrence. This program came from New York. This is Fred Collins speaking. <laughs> <laughs>